come to it. Potential energy diagrams are a way to express what happens during a chemical reaction in terms of energy either being released in an exothermic reaction or being stored in an endothermic reaction. This is a potential energy axis. It's the y-axis, and our x-axis is time, but we call it the reaction coordinate. So here we have how much energy the reactants have. A little bump up for the activation energy, and here we have how much energy the product has. Now, on your CST test at the end of the year, what they'll probably do is put A, a letter A here, and a B here, and a C here, and a D here. And they'll give you a choice, A, B, C, D, of what to choose from. And they'll say, okay, the letter A is um, the activation energy, the energy of the products, the energy of the reactants, or the delta H. And you'll put reactants. So knowing what these areas represent is important. <coughs> In a potential energy diagram, right here is how much stored energy reactants have. Now we have an endothermic reaction. If we look here, our reactants do not have much energy. Our products do have energy. This is an uphill climb. This is a typical curve for an endothermic reaction. Again, your y-axis is the amount of stored energy, and your x-axis, can you get this? Mm -hmm. Your x-axis is your time or reaction coordinate. So we start out without much energy, and we have to put in a whole bunch of energy here. And then it settles down a little bit because some of this energy is used to rearrange the molecules, not actually ending up stored in them. We do have difference, though, between our reactants and our products. And the movement is upward, therefore, the delta H, the delta H for an endothermic reaction is considered positive because there's an increase in stored energy. Done. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the effect of a catalyst. First of all, catalysts or organic compounds called enzymes are used always in living things because you and I don't do well if you hold us over a Bunsen burner or over an open flame to make our reactions happen faster. We tend to just burn up. So when you deal with organic compounds, you have to have something besides heat energy to help make reactions more guaranteed. And we use enzymes for this. So what the effect of a catalyst is you make a reaction more probable and therefore, you lower the amount of energy required for it to happen. If we look over here on the side board, here we have an enzyme. An enzyme is a large organic molecule. We're over here on the side board. Bless you. And two other organic molecules right into place. These are big molecules. Big one molecules can bump into each other all kinds of ways that don't result in bonding. When they bond, they have to touch each other at exactly the right carbon. So for them to line up this way and guarantee it, one fits here, one fits here, they bond, and then they leave. And another one fits here, and another one fits here, and they bond, and they leave. So what you're doing is making sure that the surfaces that they're going to bond together on are exactly exposed. This enzyme or organic catalyst is used over and over. When they leave, they might snap or break off some carbon. Eventually, this has to be remanufactured. But it can be um, used over and over. And if you help guarantee that the reaction will happen with this rather than with raising the temperature and making them bump into each other more often. We need a lower temperature, so we have to make sure in another way, and we do that with enzymes. 